right, Rio here in my home office this morning, recording in the future, <laughs> for in the future, for week nine. So go ahead and bring up your Google Doc for lecture, and let's get started. Um, here in week nine is the point of the semester that you have to make that should I stay or should I go decision. And um, again, this is, most of you are doing great. There is a small percentage of you that need to get caught up or decide that you're going to take this in another semester. So it's that point at week nine at the end of the week on that Friday. Um, so the Friday of this week um, is the last date to drop a class for full term 18 week courses. So I want you to know that. Make sure you've uh, planned accordingly, not just for this class, but for any class. Okay. So the other thing is DevFest is quickly heading in. I had made the offer if you wanted a ticket. I think I did this. If I didn't, let me do this now. Uh, you can email me and say I'd like a ticket and I'd be happy to give you one of the student uh, tickets that are free. I just ask that you make a commitment to be there because trust me for planning this stuff, it's a, it's a real challenge when folks sign up and then don't show up. So just make a commitment that if you're going to do that, uh, that would be awesome. All right, so the next topic in your notes was week seven. And so that actually just happened in, in this um, in this recording of in week eight, because as you hopefully know, I record a week ahead of time. And I had the wrong due date last night uh, set, actually the night before. I had the wrong due date, and because normally all discussions are due on Monday night. But for some reason, when I set up the uh, course this this semester, I don't know why, but in this particular week, I must have thought there was a holiday. I put it, because I usually do that. If there's a holiday, I move the due date one, um, one day over. So, but for whatever reason, I didn't. And I didn't catch it, and I went and graded, and I heard from like three of you, which is totally cool. I really appreciate and respect that when students keep a track on um, what's going on with their grade. That means you care and that's awesome. And it took a little while, honestly, for one person that was willing to really kind of dig in with me. For me, and actually it was somebody in the classroom who also is taking this class, who said, hey, the due date was Tuesday. <laughs> and I went, wow, why would I have done that? And now it totally makes sense. And it just really brings up the idea of, you know, because I've cha we've changed over time uh, the one aspect of when these discussions are due. So I'm going to start putting in each of the items that are for the hands-on and the current topics a reminder, right, and making a making a clear date that you have to post before uh, Sunday night uh, if for your main reply uh, to the post. Okay, so that has to be done before Sunday night, and that way we have that window of time where folks and students can reply to work or to other students post out there, okay? So you'll see that when I get into this in a minute. So um, I don't know if there's anything else I wanted to go over except that, you know, it's been, it's one of those things and, you know, we're all busy and sometimes things just kind of get out of our, our, our view and we're kind of focused on where we're heading and so it's always good when feedback starts rolling in about, hey, what, why did this happen? So I had said at one point I wanted to do a hangout, uh, but everybody in there said that we probably wouldn't be use it, you probably would not use it, but I can tell you in the case of last night, night before, probably would have been. <laughs> so just know that if for some reason you see something that doesn't make sense, also email me before that, right, which is very helpful then if, you know, if I can make it more clear or if I can correct a mistake that helps everyone. So if you happen to catch those things, just be willing to, if you can, and time allows to come do that. Okay, so let's turn to the course and take a look at what we have for this week. So as we end week eight, um, this was an important, I know it's a little bit of a before, but if you happen to be checking this out, is that I gave that offer of use, you know, find your own content for whatever editor you're going to and I would say to you if you can't find an hour of content for here this probably tells you you want to find a different editor because uh, that would really talk about the reach of that editor okay so this week you have the uh, 
search engine optimization for e-commerce course and we'll be covering this two weeks so this will take us two weeks to get through and then this week uh, I've shown you which items you'll need to do uh, one two and three so three sections so in your notes make sure those get headings and of course class topics as we're going over now and oh by the way did you notice that um, Fresno City changed the CSS file uh, for Canvas to brand it uh, for, for Fresno City. The first version I did not care for, but this version I think is definitely a bit better. They still need to, I noticed that the rollovers on here are actually more branded, but the uh, normal state's not, so they still have some work to do. But hopefully with the work you've done and uh, already in this course, you have a better idea of what that CSS file has in it uh, at least a little more. Okay, so back to here. So um, that's the lecture you have for this week, is that first part. And then uh, I did publish the uh, week uh, Project Zero, a huge part of our class, 25% of the class. 25, so in your notes, 25% of this class is related to this project, okay? And we start talking about it this week and we start working on it. So halfway through the semester, we start doing that. So for you, because you don't see these other weeks, but you can scroll down to the bottom because I did publish this draft. And you can take a look at it, uh, give me your feedback. Um, anyway, do that, uh, you know, how when you first read through it, your impressions and, you know, any additional information you might want to see on here. Now, the one thing I think we're going to do here is actually just use GitHub pages because uh, like I said before, uh, Google Drive, and this is for hosting the site once you create it, okay? So uh, probably this will only be GitHub pages, which is really leading us to the hands-on for this week. But So that is the, let me scroll back up, for week nine, your current topics is that. And now our hands-on, so I'm going to walk you through how to do this. And oh, by the way, before I leave that, let me show you what I've included now and I will do in each one. It says make sure you do your main post, your main reply to this post by Sunday night. Uh, if you're posting after Sunday night, your main post is late and it will be reduced by 20, 15 points. Now remember, your replies are worth 25 points, so if you don't do a reply and you post late, it really hurts you. Okay, so keep that in mind. Alright, so here we are finally back doing the hands-on part of this week. So last week I had you just get get set up on your operating system and I showed on the Windows side. So on the Windows side the following um, series of commands you're going to need to do uh, will be in your git bash and then on for the Mac students uh, just terminal. Okay. So I am logged in to GitHub uh, with my student account that I've used and this is the repo that we set up for GitHub pages and that you've updated and you've been doing commits uh, through the uh, website itself and the repo has been hosted on GitHub pages or GitHub IO so next step we're going to take is we're going to actually have show you how to bring this local and we're going to clone this repo into your local system this is really a good thing to know how to do. So we'll come back here in a minute. Well, I'll just go ahead and set up what we need to do. So I'm in, okay, I'm in my local directory. Um, I have created, let me just show you this. Oh, I must have trashed it. Okay, let me clear that. CD uh, period period, CD space period period moves you one directory back. Okay, so here is my directory and I'm going to change into documents. Now CD space documents changes into that directory and for me I have a lot of files but ls is the command uh, to show all those files. So now this first step of what I'm going to do you could do um, also through any kind of file explorer. Okay, So you could just go to your docs and create uh, a direct uh, folder. Okay, you could do that. But I think it's good to know how to do the same thing uh, on the command line. 
So again, under Windows, under Git Bash, under Mac, under Terminal, you can do MKDIR. If you're familiar at all with uh, Windows command line, don't do this, but if you were, you may remember that command, which is make directory. But on a, a Linux-based system, it's MKDIR. And now here's what I recommend doing, um, CIT 82 FA 16. Okay, so I'm making a directory, CIT 82 FA 16. Now that directory is now there. And by the way, again, if you were to move into um, the file manager or um, finder, you would see that that folder got created. Of course, there's nothing in there. I just wanted to show you the equivalent, um, what you see from a file directory. So CD, CIT, uh, 82, FA. By the way, a little trick here uh, is if I didn't want to type the whole thing, if I hit tab and I had typed enough of the directory, it would know uh, to find that directory. So you can type it out or these little things that you do to make your life and command line easier are good. Okay. So LS. So now I'm LS is just a list of directories, our list of files and folders, and in this case there's nothing because we haven't created anything. Okay? So what we're going to do is now that you're in this subdirectory, now we're going to clone, okay, and that's actually a command, that GitHub repo. Okay, so out here, when you're in this GitHub repo, uh, I want you to do copy. So come over here to clone or download, and we're going to just grab that and you can either use this copy to clipboard or you can use your normal copy commands however you want to do it and don't do these commands right you could but don't just because I want you to learn how to use command line in its power okay and its glory so what you want to do here is now that you're in this subdirectory you've created the next command you're about to do will create another folder for you so you don't have to create this folder by doing this command, which is git, let me just kind of zoom in, although we're pretty good zoomed in here, git clone, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste, okay, so that what I pasted was the URL for that repo, and at the end it added a dot git, because that, that is the uh, extension, or in this case the the thing in your local system that tells it it's a repo, which by the way it's a file that if you ever looked at hidden files you would see, but at this point I'm going to hit enter. So what it's doing, and it did it pretty quick because there was not much out there, is it went out, looked at that folder, and cloned into my local repo that structure and those files. So now if I do an ls, I will see, matter of fact let me do a clear and do an ls, you will see now that repo name for GitHub Pages. Okay, so we'll do a CD Rio FCC. Now again, if I hit tab here, because it's the only thing in there, I don't have to fully type that out, and that's just good to know how to do. Cool. So now if I do LS here, awesome. I now have the local system that is a copy of what is out on GitHub Pages. Okay, so I'm just going to walk you through some commands, and then next week I'm going to actually have you do a push. I've decided that, and a push is you make changes to your local files, and then you push them, you place them into the server. You, and there's different technologies we talk about doing that with, but with Git, uh, there is just a command that pushes them, uh, moves them from the local to the remote. But again, we'll do that next week. All right, so I'm just going to flip over to show you that in my file manager, where's my file manager, my finder, finder where are you, there you are, let me zoom back out so you can see this a little better, that in my documents, right, I have that folder, I have no those two files, so I'm just going to show you how to make some quick edits to this, right, and of course this I would open in my editor, right, like we did when we were using Google Drive, except now it's only local, okay, but before I do that, I'm going to move back over here. I want you to do the following command to ensure that you got the repo. And it's just a command you will use a lot. Okay, and it's called git status. So right now, git status says on your master branch, 
uh, and this is um, we don't get into branching in this course I'm gonna get to it actually if you take my JavaScript class I need to start talking about that in the next couple weeks in that class but really you can create branches um, but m all the time for this semester for this class you'll be working on the master branch so you don't have to worry about that but I want you to see this command before we make a change to this file okay so I'm gonna move back to my um, my file my my finder or for you on Windows your um, your file explorer and that's the file so in this case I could open with and I could select my um, editor of choice which I told you I'd use Sublime, so I'll go ahead and open that up in Sublime, right? Uh, I don't have the current version. Okay, so what that means, and I'll just show you. I'll go ahead and get out of here. Because the other way you can do this doo -doo -doo, is that you, so that's one way, is you can just right click and tell your operating system, open the editor associated with that, or I think I already have it open. Very cool. Let me just make size this into the window so you can see this. So then I could do file and I could do open and now I would navigate to that dock area. I'm going to get to here and then in here I would just click open. Cool. So then I have that those two files open in my editor. Very nice, right? So I'm going to do a P here. Uh, this is something I think if we haven't talked about we definitely will is how to make your life and you should learn this too when you're leveling up on your editor as well. This is paragraph text. Okay, But I had you guys make some changes to this uh, file so you have more in here than I do but that's okay. Now one thing about sublime text that's not that that I'm and the reason I'm not a big fan of it is that it doesn't auto save. Um, but in this case I can tell by the circle up here that it is not saved so if I just hit file save then that saves the changes that I did so now let me move back to my command line okay so now let me do that now that I've changed a file let me do a git status now so what this shows me is that I have a file that's been modified and you just saw me make that modification on the editor Okay, so in red it says I have a file in here, right? Uh, changes have not been staged. So now you have to do the git workflow. Okay, so we're going to do that. So let me do clear just so we have that. And I'm going to do git add. Now I could tell it just index file, or I just like to, for simplicity, do star. So I'm really saying add anything. So reason you do git add is first you change files and then you add them into the repo okay and that's really a staging file and a staging step and then you commit them into your repo okay so what by doing git add it doesn't give you any uh, results and no feedback but now if you do git status what this shows us is that now this is no longer in red now this would look different based on your operating system so don't worry about that Okay, so now what we want to do is a git commit. Now this is really important, right? As a matter of fact, I'm going to back up. I'm going to clear the window because I want you to see this. Okay, so I'm going to do a git commit. Now you've done commit commits up on GitHub pages, up on the GitHub website interface, but now you're doing these on the local system. So I'm going to do dash m. Now be careful not to hit enter there because if you do it sends you into a place that's kind of weird. I'm going to do a space. I'm going to do a quote. I'm going to say my first changes in uh, my local system. Okay. Cool. So that's committing the change that I did. Good. And when I do that, by the way, make sure you open a dash m space open quote the message, the uh, commit message, and then the end quote. Cool, so now once you've done that, now do git status. Now we're back where we started, where there's everything is up to date, you're good. And this is where next week we'll do a git push to give you that experience. But now I just, this week we're really just stepping into this one step at a time. 
for those of you, and I know there are a couple of you taking 93, this is going to be so easy because we do this every day in that class. But that's okay because this is part of this class is just getting you leveled up on how to use uh, command line and in this case command line get commands. All right. So let's see, the last thing I'm going to have you do, and this is where you're going to take your print screen, is you're going to go do GitHub log, okay? So what I will see here is a commit that you've made, uh, that, that commit uh, that you made or you made along or you had your own content up there, okay? So, and these were the commits uh, we did um, when we did them out on the GitHub pages, okay? So this commit, and, you can, and that's why I want you to do this command, yeah, and if you see that colon, that's just because there's more information that needs to come through, and then good, it did it. Let's see. I think it was just because, not sure what happened there. Is there something else? Yeah, I guess it just needed to. Hmm, not sure why. Anyway, I'll figure that out in a second. There must be, it may be because of my resolution that there's something else that it was trying to show and because of my resolution it couldn't. So the point is that you take a print screen here showing that you made a commit into your local system. You put that up on your, by the way, you could actually at this point if you want, no, you couldn't unless you wanted to do a push. So go ahead and place that print screen up on your shared with everyone and place that into your discussion board for this week. Okay, so let me come back here. Come back here. Cool. All right, so um, I, that's a very hopefully basic introduction, gentle introduction to command line. Uh, if you're on Windows, hopefully you didn't run into any issues, but if you did, right, here's the time in your discussion to reach out and say, hey, here's some of the stuff that I ran into, right? So because I, I believe doing the clone uh, works much better for students than building the repos and then trying to push. Uh, it's been my experience so far that that's been a, a better experience. Anyway, have a great week, uh, week nine, and I'll talk to you in week 10, unless I talked to you before. <laughs>